When deploying your applications to Kubernetes, there's so many different resource types, from deployments to cron jobs to daemon sets, and each of those resources has a ton of different configuration options. How can you be confident that you're making reasonable choices for all of these settings? That's where tools like Popeye come to the rescue. Popeye is an open source project that describes itself as a Kubernetes cluster resource sanitizer. It's a tool you can use to scan your cluster and identify potential misconfigurations so that you can fix them. Today, I'm going to show you how to use it. Hi, my name is Sid, also known as DevOps Directive here on YouTube, and I'm a developer advocate working with the channel. If you want to try out running your own Kubernetes cluster to follow along with the tutorial, there will be a link in the description that will give you $100 credit when you create a new account, which should be more than enough to get started. Without further ado, let's get into it. Now, the first thing that I'll do is create a Linode Kubernetes engine cluster uh, from the console interface here. So I'll just click Create Cluster. I'll call it Popeye Demo. Select a region. Generally, you want to select one geographically close to your end users. Pick a Kubernetes version, and then choose which node types you want. In this case, I'll just be deploying some small sample applications. So I'll pick the shared CPU option, and then add three of these Linode 4 gigabyte machines to my cluster. I can click Create Cluster. And that will go off and provision a Kubernetes cluster in the background that we'll be able to use. In the meantime, let's get Popeye installed into our system. So this is the GitHub repo for Popeye. As I mentioned, it's a Kubernetes cluster resource sanitizer. So it's going to scan the resources deployed into our cluster and tell us potential misconfigurations that we can then go fix. There's a few different ways to install it. On Mac OS, you can use Homebrew. Uh, you can also use Go to install it directly. You could build from the source code. Or on the releases page, there's pre-built binaries for different system types. In my case, I'll use Homebrew. The command is just brew install Popeye. And then once it finishes installing, I'll do Popeye version to see that it's installed. And as you can see, I'm using version 0.11.1. Now let's go check on our cluster and see if it's done provisioning. And now here from the Kubernetes interface, I can download a cube config that will give me credentials to authenticate to the cluster. We also see a couple of my nodes coming online here. So I'll download this file. And then I'll drag it into my working directory. At this point, I can set the cube config environment variable. to my present working directory slash Popeye demo cube config. If I do kubectl get nodes, we see the three nodes provisioned into my cluster with the status ready. Great. Now there's one more additional thing that I want to install into my cluster before I start using Popeye. And that's what's called the metric server. The metric server is a component of the Kubernetes project, which allows you to collect metrics associated with the CPU and memory usage of the pods running in your cluster. This is going to be great because Popeye can leverage that information to tell us if we've over-provisioned or under-provisioned within our configurations. We can find the installation manifest that we care about by going under releases, seeing this latest release, and the file hosted here at download slash version slash components dot yaml will have the information we want. We also can use the alias latest to get the same thing. So I can issue this wget command on that URL, which will pull down the latest version of that comp components.yaml and output it to a file in my local directory. I'll open that file. And we can see this is the Kubernetes manifest required to deploy metric server into the cluster. There is one additional setting that we need to modify, and that is down here on line 138, where we're passing in arguments to the metric server container. And we're going to add one line here, which is going to be an additional feature flag. And that's just going to be kubelet insecure TLS. The reasoning for that can be found in this page within the documentation for Linode Kubernetes engine. Essentially, there's a certificate that gets rotated frequently, and there's no current way to add that private IP address to that certificate so that it can be used over TLS. This will allow us to leverage this component without that in place. Now that I've made that modification, I can apply this manifest with kubectl apply dash f metrics components, metrics server components. Because I set that cube config environment variable to point to the cube config that I downloaded, this will be applied to the cluster I provisioned. We see all those resources being created. 
we can now look in the cube system namespace and see that service come to life. kubectl get pods in the cube system namespace. Here's the metric server starting up. The pod was created, but the container inside is not ready yet. I used to do that same command once more. And now we see that one of one containers in that pod are healthy and running. Awesome. At this point, we have our Kubernetes cluster with the metric server installed into it, as well as Popeye installed onto our local system. Popeye is going to use whatever cube config context we have active. And so all I need to do is run the Popeye command, and it will do an initial scan of our cluster. We can see here at the top, it's able to connect to the cluster, and it's detecting that we have that metric server installed. Now, there's a number of different portions of the report that you'll see. Uh, it's checking our Kubernetes version, making sure it's not super old. Uh, it's checking against all of the different RBAC settings, uh, et cetera. For any finding, it either just reports back that it saw it, or it gives us a reference to a set of Popeye codes, which we'll take a look at, that gives us more information about what it is trying to tell us about that particular configuration. Because this is just a default LKE cluster without anything really deployed into it, we see that lots of these sections of the report are empty. We get to the bottom, we have a cluster score of 100, A, perfect, great. However, Let's deploy an application into our cluster, rescan it, and see what happens then. One demo application I like to use is this microservices demo from Google, which will deploy a number of different services into our cluster, comprising a pretend online boutique shop consisting of an ad service, a cart service, a checkout service, et cetera. So it deploys a number of different services, which together make up this sample application. In order to deploy this, I'll clone that repo locally. Now I can navigate into that directory. And specifically, under the release subdirectory, there's a Kubernetes manifest.yaml. We'll do kubectl apply f on that Kubernetes manifest.yaml. And that's going to deploy all of these resources into the cluster. You can see there's a number of deployments. Each of them is fronted by a service. And if we look at service front end, you can see we actually have an external load balancer that will have a public IP such that we will be able to access this from the public internet. Behind the scenes, this is going to provision a load balancer to provide that access. So if I go here to the cloud console, under node balancers, we can see this one spinning up. And if I go to that address, it tries to load our page. It looks like at least some component is not healthy yet. Looking at the pods, most of them are healthy, but not all of them. And now, a couple minutes later, all of the services are up and appear to be healthy. Let's try to reload that page once more. Awesome. Here's our sample application running inside the cluster. Now what we want to do is rerun Popeye, and it will take a look at all those configurations and tell us if there's anything that might be a little off. So I just rerun the Popeye command. And now we see our cluster score has dropped a bit from 100 to 90. And we have some of these yellow warnings about our different configurations. For example, if we look under the services section, it's telling us that we only have one a pod associated with an endpoint for this ad service. This is true for many of our services. That's because we've only deployed one replica within each of our deployments. However, that means if that replica goes down, that service would experience some downtime. So let's actually change that and change our replica count to two on many of these different services. I'll open up that release Kubernetes manifest file. We see that many of these deployments don't even specify a number of replicas, and so it defaults to one. 
In order to fix this, under our spec for our deployment, we can add a replica count, set it to two, let's say. Let's do that for the checkout service, the recommendation service, our front end, our payment service, our product catalog service, the cart service. This load generator component doesn't have a service in front of it. So we're not getting a warning about it. So I'll leave it with a single replica. Set replicas to for our currency service, our shipping service, the Redis cart, and finally, our ad service. Great, let me reapply this manifest. And we can see all those additional replicas of our different services coming to life. Now that we have two copies of each of our different pods, let's rerun Popeye and see if it has that same warning or not. Looks like making that modification helped our cluster score to go up. And under our services tab, we no longer have any of those warnings. Awesome. Now that's just one concrete example of the type of thing that Popeye can detect and warn us about. There's a number of other ones here. And as I mentioned, there's these pop codes and each of them corresponds to one Popeye output that's telling us something about the cluster. If we go to the Popeye repo under code, docs, and then codes, we have a listing here of all of the different Popeye error codes that can come out. Severity zero means that this setting is actually okay. Severity one is an info level statement. So it's not particularly bad, but it wants to tell you some piece of information. And then two and three are the ones that we may want to take action on. Number two is that yellow, like we saw with the single endpoint. And number three would be a more severe issue that we'd wanna take action on immediately. So here we have pop 300. And so let's take a look at that. It's a severity two error code, and it's telling us that those pods are using the default service account as their identity. If we needed to connect to the Kubernetes API server, it would be much more secure if we created a dedicated service account for each workload and granted that service account the specific roles that it needs in order to perform its function. So this is warning us that our workloads are using this default service account, which could be an issue if we wanted to lock down security within our cluster. As you're using Popeye, I would take a look at these different codes and try to understand what they mean and why you may want to address them if they're found. So far, we've just been looking at the configurations within our cluster. However, as I mentioned, we installed that metric server so we can actually use information about the CPU and memory usage of our pods and get feedback about that. In order to do that, we have to configure Popeye to do so. We configure Popeye through what is known as a spinach file. So we'll have a spinach.yaml file that gets passed at runtime, and that will tell Popeye exactly what to scan for. In the repo under the spinach directory, there's a few sample spinach files you might want to use if you're deploying onto AKS or EKS. There's also an example in the top level readme of a spinach YAML configuration. Uh, so I just copied this spinach file to my local directory, which I have here as spinach.yaml. And one really interesting thing is that under the Popeye allocation section, we can have it tell us if we are over or under utilizing the resource requests or limits within our deployments, stateful sets, daemon sets, et cetera. Now, the default values that were in that microservices demo were pretty reasonable. However, just to show that this functionality works, I've cranked the threshold value of when it's gonna report an under percent utilization to 1,000, uh, as well as the over percent utilization down to one. This is going to force that warning to come out, even though our current allocations are just fine. Now the default in the example was to set this to 200 and this to 50. You want to fine tune these depending on where you want your own thresholds to report on. To use the spinach file, we're gonna use the Popeye command. However, we're gonna add the dash F flag 
and pass it that spinach.yaml file. Now scrolling up, we see that some configurations from our spinach.yaml file were violated. The first one is this container image is not hosted on an allowed Docker registry. So one setting that I didn't show is down here at the bottom of the spinach file, we can list a set of allowed registries that we want to pull our images from. In that previous scan, it was only allowing Quay and Docker. However, let me add the gcr.io registry and rerun and see if those go away. OK, that's better. So a setting like this as a cluster operator allows me to control and observe whether or not the images are coming from a trusted source and add only the registries that we want to that section of our configuration file. Also, we see this warning coming out with pop error code 505 telling us that the memory is under allocated. The current usage of this pod is 44 megabytes. However, it's requested 128, so I'm only using 34% of what I've requested. Now, depending on your desires for utilization versus stability, this may or may not be acceptable. And that's where you can choose those thresholds in your spinach file to decide when you want to raise that type of warning. As you can see, Popeye can be a powerful tool for allowing you deploying and managing applications within Kubernetes to understand potential misconfigurations and then figure out how to address those to improve your cluster performance and security so that your applications will run smoothly. Hopefully, today's demo gave you an idea of how you might use Cluster within your own operations to improve your application configurations. If you had any questions as I went along today, feel free to leave those in the comment section. We'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. Also, if you want to learn more about Kubernetes and deploying your applications on LKE, take a look at some of the other videos on this channel as there's a number of great resources showcasing different tools, applications, and methodologies for being successful. That's it for today. Take care.